We're live. Nobody's in yet. All right. Just give it a minute. That's not all your notes and everything? Yeah. All right. Well, God bless you girls. God bless everybody that took the time to just uh, dedicate this time. Thank God for you girls. I love using the Lord. Amen. Whoever's coming in right now, is there people in? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. yeah. God bless you, Ken, right. Ruby. God bless you girls for joining. Uh, Mason made Tiffany, follow blue on my zeros. A shot on the Pennsylvania. I have two beautiful daughters. Uh, I fellowship with uh, these ladies, the women's ministry, the women of the word for a couple of years now, all of us for the glory of God. And uh, before we get into this, uh, we just want to show you girls like what our heart is. Um, we're just women that love the word of God and we want to share it with other women to grow in grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ as first Peter says that's all I made she mandas they need to me because I made some my name we don't ever want to come off that we're we're smarter we're, or we're more better than anybody she's some pastors she's some Bible scholars we're just ordinary women we're housewives um, that just want to share the gospel truth with other women and serve the Lord with all of our hearts. Amen, girls? Amen. Um, so with that being said, ma'am, with the Erica, Bonnie, Mangasti das Duma Dumen Saadiat, follow prosperity gospel, uh, speaking things into existence, uh, sowing seeds, okay? This is going to be the topics that me and the girls are going to be going over. Um, we want, we've been wanting to address these things for quite some time now. And a little bit here and there, I think the girls previously, they touched up on this in the past. But you know something, like every now and then we got to be cautious and we got to talk about this and bring it up again because this still creeps into the churches. Uh, so um, this is a TBN teaching that yeah. we're going to be talking about. Uh, and this is a false gospel. We have to understand that. Uh, it's an ear-tickling doctrine and a false Jesus. So if it's not the Jesus according to the Bible, that Jesus won't save you. That's what we want to emphasize. So we're going to show that Scripture makes it very clear that Jesus never guaranteed a healthy, successful lifestyle. That's not what he guaranteed. Um, we're going to be going over where is man's part of his power that's in his word, speaking into existence, sowing a seed in order to get a, a blessing. So we'll be touching up on this. Um, and me and the girls will, you know, be looking in the scriptures. They be cast so so touching more semen. Girls, you don't, you want to add anything to that? I think you did a beautiful job. Erica, you want that? Good. All right, girls. Uh, let's pray again for just a second. Amen. Before we start. Uh, Bonnie, you want to pray for us? Yeah, let's just up in prayer. Hallelujah, Mogadam, Mogadam. Father, first and foremost, Bishop Bogoyet, you ask, Lord, I pray that you search my heart, find anything that is contrary to you, that contradicts you, Father, that would fully sanctify me from it, Lord, remove it out of my life, Father. I pray that every word that we speak wouldn't be, wouldn't, wouldn't offend people in the way where we make it seem like we think we're smarter or we know more or anything like that, Father, but you would show your people through your word that we ourselves know nothing, but you have given knowledge to even the little things of the world, Father. So I pray that your people would hear this word tonight, they would touch their hearts and it would encourage them to pursue holiness, to pursue the gospel first and foremost. I pray that you would use this night for your daughters, Father. You glorify people yourself through us, Father. I pray that you would use us as a vessel tonight, pray that all that upon a good soil, as Tiffany prayed earlier, that people would hear the gospel through this message, and that lives will be changed for your glory, for your honor, for your praise, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. All right, girls. Uh, now, I'm sure whoever is in this room 
whoever's listening right now, I'm, I'm sure that you girls are familiar with uh, Gajigane preachers such as Stephen Furtick, Creflo Dollar, uh, Joel Osteen, one of my girls. Who else is in this uh, teaching this? Uh, T.D. Jakes, Ken Copeland, uh, there's a lot of them. Right. Uh, so the list goes on. All right. Now, Catholic preachers, one patiante on the faith prosperity doctrine. I won't preach on because I will all del te lumiao. I won't all follow to show. No ma te del to barbalimos, te del omanos barbalimos, te del omanos sastarimos on the list of stato. It's a, guarantee, it's a guarantee to give you a physical healing, uh, to make you wealthy. Now, they do say that Jesus died for your sins, uh, which is true. But, the, see, this is the issue. They undermine that. Mm. They take away from that good news message. They make the good news about things, material possessions, oh. a guaranteed physical healing. They have a on the trial. Uh, they they take away and they add, so they put more emphasis on Jesus promises the prosperity and and the success. Uh, now, girls, if anything, Scripture teaches that Jesus actually promises the opposite. Uh, we will see in Scripture Jesus, uh, for example, he says in Matthew 16. Uh, I'll read it here. It's in Matthew 16, 24. If you guys have your Bible out, uh, I really encourage you to have your Bible and just please take notes down. And it says here, then Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would, for whoever would save his life would lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Mm. All right. So that's just uh, one example, okay, that he makes clear. Um, he, he promises, actually, too, that in this world, girls, will have many trials and tribulations. All right, Scripture tells us that we'll be hated for his name's sake, John 15, 18. If the world, if the world hated him, they'll also hate us, meaning the believer, right? Uh he says, if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own mother and father and wife and his, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. It's, it's harsh, you know what I mean? It's, it's, a, it's a big thing that Jesus is saying here. Girls, you may lose your own life for proclaiming the gospel in uh, other countries, girls, like in Iraq or if you go in certain areas in the Tamam, you just get persecuted and you, you could be beheaded for your faith on Lodel, right? Yeah. Uh, for proclaiming the gospel for your for your faith. So it could drive a wedge in your own household between a husband and a wife. Jesus said that he didn't come to bring peace but to bring a sword, as he says in Matthew 10. So Haradas, he's the dividing line. And where am I going with all of this? We're quoting these scriptures, girls. What Jesus said, because the point is the gospel, the good news, Sostad Avilo. He came into this world, the Kedel Yet Buki, to do one purpose and one purpose only. And it was to take your sins upon himself and save you from hell, to save you from the wrath of God. Amen. Uh, I want to make something clear too. We're not saying, girls, at all. We're not saying that God doesn't want to bless people with nice things. We're not against prosperity. We're not trying to say at all that God doesn't want to bless you, that he won't provide for you, that he's against you getting a car or a house. If, if you're trying with all of your heart to provide for your family, uh, like striving for an American business, desiring to do the will of the Lord, God will bless you and will provide for you. And yeah. he will give you fruits for your labor, as Deuteronomy 30 tells us. Amen. Uh, with that, Bonnie, Erica, you girls want to say anything? Share anything on that? Yeah. Uh, let me just get back to my notes. Go ahead. Amen. So, uh, the reason why this is so important to understand is because these people are um, preaching things that contradict the Bible. Jesus, as Tiffany said earlier, never promised that we would never suffer on earth. Uh, in fact, he always said we will suffer here on earth. It says in um, 
John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world, and this, this is what he says, right? In the world you will, as in like it's going to happen. In the world, you will have trials, tribulations, distress, and sufferings. But be courageous, be confident, be uh, un undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished, my victory abiding. So basically what this verse is saying is that in this world, we are going to have trial and tribulation. We're going to suffer exactly. pain and tears and it's got it's the world it's a fallen world of fallen under sin so we're gonna suffer but but christ is telling us but be of good cheer because i have overcome the world uh so what we suffer here on earth will reap greater joy for what is to come what's to come the kingdom amen amen, uh, amen. but we talk about here and now and what's going on in this era and what i have now materialistically the bible says um you can't if you didn't bring nothing into this world you can't take nothing out you understand? Right, so, right, right. When we go to meet with God in heaven, our jewelry, cars, our fa fancy houses, money, um, all these things won't be. You understand? And right. uh, these teachers are teaching that the, 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 proof, the proof that God loves us and the proof that we're saved is if we have fancy things, if we have money, if we're healthy, if we're wealthy, if we're blessed, if we're this, if we're that. That that's the proof of uh, our salvation, or that's the proof of God love. When actually Paul was shipwrecked, uh, he was went hungry. He was um, they just, the the uh, there's a verse that says the Tangosas, Nazis can't the Philadel. So if anyone was loved by God, if anyone was saved, it was Paul. Amen. So Amen. where's the contrast in that? The disciples over and over again suffered for the gospel. Christ said. Uh, you will suffer on my behalf. So it's not, suffering is not something that should be looked down upon. It's not something that should be, you should be ashamed of. Uh, but actually, it should encourage you to understand that you are, if you are a believer in Christ, you are suffering for righteousness' sake. Amen. Anything you want to add, Erica? Um, well, yeah. Um, I know a lot of the times I would hear uh, things like, why do we need to know all this stuff? Why do we need to know where this came from? Uh, why can't we just let them worship their God in their way and our God in our way? Um, but the problem <laughs> is, is it's creeping into the Romano church. And um, yeah, that's the problem, yeah. I, I was taught this way for a lot of years uh, to believe that I, I got to have faith. And the reason things didn't happen in my life was that I didn't have enough faith and that I had doubt. And uh, that's why things weren't going right. Now, if you look at the history, why is this so dangerous? Why is this so important? Um, the history, where this came from. This, uh, the word of faith and the, um, the old uh, declare it and name and claim it and stuff, it came from um, a Hajo named uh, Phineas Quimby. Uh, he was from the 1800s. He was uh, called the father of new thought. He was um, a philosopher. He wasn't a Christian, but uh, it says here, essentially a metaphysical healing cult founded on the idea that the mind is the key to unlocking your true reality. He was a hypnosis, a spiritualist, and a philosopher. Right. Right. Uh, he's like little budgie. Then I left Kuswato, uh, new thought, and he became like that he was a spiritualist. And he would get this because he went to, I think, a Dabani. She was like a witch. Hmm. Uh, I saw somewhere. And this is where, you understand, it gave birth to all of these other heresies. And the miss that with the scripture. Yeah, this, this is where it came like, from. This is the, originating, uh, the original place where it came from. Uh, he taught things like all sickness and disease originates in the mind. So you get sickness in your body because you think it in your mind. Uh, he said healing can be obtained with right thinking. So if you correct your thinking, you'll be corrected in your body. Uh, he believed he discovered the secret to the healing method of Jesus. So he was trying to say that this is how Jesus healed people. He also denied that Jesus resurrected from the dead. Now, why was this so important is because um, 
another Gajo, let me get his name real quick, E.W. Kenyon. E.W. Okay. Kenyon brought this into the church in uh, the 1900s, in the 1800s to the 1900s. And he brought this into um, Christianity and he mixed it. He got those ideas and he added them into Christianity. Uh, from him, we get Kenneth Hagin. Kenneth Hagin made the first non-denominational church in 1936. Uh, uh, as we know, Kenneth Hagin, he started really the the word of faith. He, he uh, further did these teaching of this Phineas Quimby guy. From there, we get Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland took the teachings of Kenneth Hagin, and this is where the word of faith movement was born in the 80s. This is where they taught things like... Um, uh, let me go to it real quick. I have it written down somewhere. I'll read it. This is from Wikipedia. Uh, Word of faith teaching holds that God wants his people to prosper in all areas of life, including finances, health, marriage, and relationships. The word of faith teaches that God's blessing empowers his people to achieve the Bible's promise. Thus, suffering does not come from God, but from Satan. Ken Copeland's ministry has said that God does not use our suffering for our benefit, and that idea is a deception of the devil, and absolutely against the word of God. If someone is not experiencing prosperity, it is because he has given Satan the authority over their life, and God will not do anything except when a believer invites him to. So they take Nasfari Moss and uh, poverty and um, all these things that we have to go through, that Bonnie just told us that scripture says that we, when Jesus promises we will go through, they say is an attack from the devil. It doesn't nice. come from God. We see in scripture that it does. We see God chastising those that he loves. Uh, we see that God never Amen. promised all kinds of money. God never promised us a Rolex, a watch, a car, a new house. Um, he gives us those things because he loves us. He provides for us. The same way he provides for the birds of the air, how much more will he provide for us as children? Mm -hmm. So. Amazing. See, it's a very big contrast. Their Paitaimos, their philosophies, um, you know, Tiala, the Manushka Nas Falo, Tiala, they're lacking faith, Nas Linga Dosta faith. That's like an affirmity. That's Katero Dujmano. And then they start the, it, it's a binding of the devil. Okay, so this is things that are just not according to scripture. I want to say something. What we have to know, guys, what's very crucial um, is that we have a Wanta foundation. We got to start with a foundation, and that foundation is Jesus Christ himself. Amen. Amen. It has to be on the rock, as he says in Matthew uh, chapter 7. Not a foundation that's built on the sand. Because if, uh, if you guys know the story about the wise man and the foolish man in Matthew 7, the wise built his house on the rock, the solid foundation. Avilo uh, brushun, Avilo storm, the floods came. The house didn't fall because it was founded on the rock, Christ. When we put into practice, now what does that mean? Well, how do we do that? How can we have a solid foundation? Uh, when we put into practice, guys, and listen to the teachings of Christ according to Scripture, abiding in Christ, because apart from Him we can do nothing, right? When we're following what the Bible says, we have a right foundation. Amen? And we don't go outside of that, because we're starting with God. The foolish man that doesn't listen to the teachings of the Bible, for example, like Kenneth Hagin, Kenneth Copeland, Dr. Gaja, where they're you understand this new age thought and positive confession, okay? Um, if they don't, they don't put that into practice, what Jesus taught, if they're relying on self and not the Bible, the house falls. It's like a house of cards. Uh, when the storm comes, it, it don't hold up. Very important, because we make up what happens. Why is this so serious? Is because we, we end up making a God that's in our own head, which is idolatry. You understand? That's what that turns into. If we go outside of scripture, we don't have a what foundation, we make up a God like that's a genie that's in our head, our own imaginary God, uh, which the Bible calls that, uh, it's called idolatry. 
Um, hey, Allah, that grants all of our wishes. That's it's a, a guarantee that gives us everything that we want. That's Shavali, that's not a God of the scriptures. So if we don't have the right foundation, we will have a low view of God and a high view of man. That's, that's a bad foundation, that is error. Uh, what else will happen, girls, if we have a bad foundation? Our worship will be man-centered, right? Uh, what else could happen? The, the prayer life will be man-centered. Our faith is man-centered. We put it, our faith in ourselves. Uh, the preaching will be man-centered, okay? So that's why it's so crucial to worship God in spirit and in truth, as John 4 tells us, which is the to the Samaritan woman, that those who worship God must worship in spirit and in truth. How can we worship in spirit and in truth, God says? Uh, his word is infallible, girls. The answer to that, how could we church us worship what God? Um, in spirit and in truth, it's his. It's the Bible. It's it's infallible, girls. His word is inerrant, which means it's without error. It's Amen. relevant for today. Amen. Uh, all scripture is God breathed, as Second uh, Timothy three sixteen says. Um, can somebody read Second Timothy three sixteen for me? You got it, Erica. You want me to grab it? If you have it, go to it. Mm -hmm. Timothy. Minute, if you guys need me to read Where something too, I could do it. First Timothy or Second Timothy? I think uh, Second Timothy three sixteen. If you guys need me to read something, just let me know. Wait a minute. It might be First Timothy. Wait. First Timothy. Oh, is inspired by God. Yes. Uh, it goes like Second Timothy three sixteen. All Scripture is inspired by God, useful to teach us what. To do. And to make us realize what is wrong in our life. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is wrong. Amen. So that's what these things, this is what the word of God does for us. It's breathed out by God. It's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness. Amen. So we could always trust uh, the scripture to show us truth. If we're Chachas really seeking or Chachimos, the Holy Spirit guides us and testifies of Christ. Amen. You could be sure of that. If you lack wisdom, girls, Jean de Gujimos, pray to God. As J uh, James 1 5 says, that God will generously give you wisdom. Amen. And uh, uh, prosperity. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I just wanted to touch up on uh, just that, just for a moment, second, that the, the prosperity gospel. Um, promises that if we just have a little more faith or just say uh, the special word in our prayer, uh, maybe we can unlock the blessing. So we use his words like that, like unlock or unravel. Yes. Uh, that we can unlock our blessings or healings uh, that you're looking for. It's an unbiblical, unfruitful message that instills false conversion and ultimately a false promise of um, Philippians 29 says, this is Philippians 129 goes, for you have been granted the privilege. So we see it's a privilege. You have granted the privilege for Christ's sake, not only to believe and confidently trust in him, but also to suffer for his sake. So it's, it's a privilege to suffer for the sake of Christ. It's, it's an honor. Um, we see that this verse tells us the privilege to suffer on behalf of Christ, and honor even. The book of James uh, tells us to count it all joy when we face crowd, Amen. because we know Amen. the Lord uses those things to grow us uh, spiritually. And teachers like um, Joel Osteen and his wife constantly say that we can uh, have our best lives now, or that we don't worship God for his glory, but we do it for ourselves. Um, right. And both right. those are, are false. Eric and Man Senator Symphony said, the uh, Bible is always telling us to deny ourselves. Uh, Jesus said it, in this world you will suffer trials and tribulations. So there isn't such a thing as having our best lives now. Uh, our best life isn't here on earth. It's in heaven with God. We don't worship God for ourselves. We worship God because he's worthy of all praise. He's holy and righteous. 
And above all, he is our creator, our master, and lord, and king, uh, and our yeah. father is subject. How to that? So, uh, all of heaven proclaims his glory. How, how much more are we to? Uh, since believers in Christ should be aware of the man-centered, self-centered message and always seek to get fed by the gospel because that is where our um, the gospel, the, what feeds the spirit. Amen? Right, amen. Yawamwala kwan saipo shen. What is so serious, guys? All right, among churches, yes, we've heard of these uh, teachings, uh, you know, what's the big deal if people say they're guaranteeing uh, a healing and success and good love? What is, uh, why is that dangerous? Why is this so bad? So the issue is, uh, the gospel is about, you have to deny yourself. The prosperity is about, it's like I mentioned earlier, it's always about me, 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 and self-fulfillment and my performance and uh, worldly passions and how we're being so led by them. And then we, uh, and, and the thing is, is another, another point I wanted to say is that the prosperity gospel, uh, it distorts the biblical gospel. What is the biblical gospel if it, when it's properly understood? For example, Paul says in Romans 5, 8, Paul declares, but God demonstrates his own love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Uh, another passage, Romans 3.23, reread that sin is something we've all committed, and that of the glory of God is something we all fall short of. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified as a gift by His grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus, whom God displayed publicly as a propitiation in His blood through faith. Amen. Uh, Ephesians 2.4 explains explosively, truthful, Amazing statements, girls. Ephesians is one of my favorite books. Um, that that God accomplished in Christ, uh, and what our purpose is in this life. Amen. And Paul writes, but God, being rich in mercy, because of His great love in which He loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. Amen. And He raised us up in the heavenly places with Jesus. Amen. Sinners, wretched people. That while we were sinners, Jesus died for us on the cross, girls. That is the amazing news. If that wouldn't have happened, we would have been chaches. We, we, we were hellbound. Uh, we're alienated, Katarudel. Uh, now you see these passages. What what do we notice here? It's the gos. Is the gospel about the gives or the giver? Is the gospel about the redeemed or the redeemer? Mm. Is the gospel about earthly riches or the eternal reward? You Amen. understand the, the prosperity gospel distorts the biblical gospel by making the good news all about you and all about your stuff. And they take out a context, guys. The prosperity preachers take out a context like uh, John 10, 10, that Baji, God's will is for you to have Bentleys, Baji, and mansions and job promotions actually the abundant life is about the security of your soul for eternity yeah. and then the abundant life is not a comfortable 70 years courtesy of the prosperity gospel leading to infinite suffering in hell if you don't follow the biblical christ as your savior yeah. amen anything you guys want to add to that yeah i just want to uh, say <laughs> I'll say is, is the Lord's will for you to have uh, health, wealth, take prosperity, all, all these all these things. But uh, Jesus gives a definition of what the will of God is. And this is what he says. This is the will of God. Just to confirm what Tiffany was saying, that the will of God is security and salvation. Uh, and this is what the will of God is. Jesus, in John 6, it says, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. So the will of God is for believers, children, to be saved from sin, from the wrath of sin, from the penalty of it, from eternal life in hell. Uh, it's not the will of God for us to be healthy and wealthy and, and anything else that the word of faith promises. 
Um, but that's what I wanted to touch on, Erica. You can continue. Um, I just wanted to, to add real quick. This came from philosophy. This came from empty promises. This came from yes. um, a faulty foundation. Uh, Colossians 2 8 says that see that see it to it that no one take you captive by philosophy and empty deceit according to human tradition, according to elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. So that further uh, adds to the the statement that the foundation needs to be on Christ. If anything yes. else, if your foundation is on anything else, you will fall. Girls, I I went through things where I, I heard people saying God's will is always to heal. God's will is for yes. you always to be healed in your body. I and hear that a lot. When my father got sick, I was mad at God. I said, God, I had faith that I thought I believed in it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't confess that he was sick. I wouldn't confess that we were going through problems. I would just speak good things over my life and nothing happened. Where were you? Why did you leave me? That caused me down the path of atheism. Not a lot of people know this about me. Um, like, I'm usually very silent about it, but I feel like it needs to be vocalized more because this is something very serious. It was really detrimental to my spiritual life with Christ. It, it totally cut me off from him. Uh, I, I decided to uh, go and look for other teachings and say, well, if this God's not going to answer my prayer, let me look for a God that will. Uh, let, me, let me look for a God in my image. And... Um, as I'll read 2 Timothy 4, 3 says, For a time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but will have itching ears. They will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions. And I fell into that category before I was saved. I did not know the gospel. And I just wanted to hear things that sounded good to me. And when those good things didn't come to pass, it it destroyed me. It broke me. Yes. But all yes. glory to the God that he saved me and pulled me out of that. He revealed himself to me. Glory and to sometimes the hard things are something we need to hear. We need to hear that we're not always going to be healthy. We need to hear that we're not always going to have money, that we are going to endure trials and persecutions. But glory be to God and praise be to Christ Jesus because he He saved us from that. He died for this purpose. Amen. Yes, we, we are going to suffer for his namesake, but that should be a privilege and an honor that we get to suffer for his name faith, that we get to preach the gospel and people get to hear the truth and truly be saved. Mm -hmm. And you know, girls, we see all the time testimonies every day, glory to God, that there's churches, there's people that do get healing uh, for God's glory. There's people that, uh, I see miracles all the time like that. Um, if this is the thing, it has to be according to the will of God. Amen. Uh, First John, I'm going to go there right now. First John 5 says, because I don't want you guys to think, Oi, well, what are you saying? To be a Christian, for you to be a, a servant of God, is that how it is? No. If it's God's will for you to have a few dollars, for you to have a little house, for for you to get a healing. These things, it, it's according to his sovereign will, and that, that can happen. You know, but even when that doesn't come to pass, let's just say, it, the faith and prosperity, t turn that around and say, well, you're lacking faith. Mm -hmm. The faith and prosperity will say, well, you, you uh, uh, there's, there's still sin that's going on in your life. Okay, uh, they'll turn that around and say, like, you're the problem. Okay, that's that's what we have a problem with. You understand? We're not against, we're not trying to say, we believe very much that God still heals today. Amen. Amen. Uh, we, we do believe that very strongly, but again, it has to be according to his will. And First John 5, 14 tells us, and this is the confidence that we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, his will grows. He hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the request that we made, that we asked of him. Amen. Amen. So, uh, Isaiah 53 girls. Let's just talk about that for just a minute. They say that you're guaranteed, not only uh, for you to be saved, spiritual healing, 
but also he died for you to have that guarantee you're going to be physically healed. So there's a huge error in that. Those are things that Isaiah never said, that you're going to be a uh, We're going to go to Isaiah 53. And the context of that is, it's a prophecy of Isaiah that Sateyadelo Messiah, Sateyadelo, uh, he's going to, this was hundreds of years, I think, before he came. It was a prophecy. And that he was going to die for his sheep, for his people. So I'm going to go here and quote it. Um, Isaiah 53, 5. Hang on. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So people will say they have a view on this um, they think it's a physical healing. Do you girls want to touch up on that? You want to go first, Erica? No, go ahead. Um, right. where, where is this, that budgie, physical healing? When you actually read the verse, it says that, um, read, read, read the verse over again, if I want to point out something. From verse 5? The, he was healed for our... And but he was pierced. He was pierced for our transgressions. Mm. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. Amen. So that whole verse, uh, right there, it sounds like a picture of Calvary, of the cross, yes. of, of the of all that. And see, the the, the divan, he was pierced for our transgressions. Yeah. Um, was um, God for our iniquities. Those are all sin term transgressions, iniquities. Uh, yeah. Those are terms that, they, that we would use to describe sin. I believe it says somewhere in Ephesians. Uh, I forgot how the verse goes. I forgot how the verse goes. For Ephesians, that it, it, it's things that, that are called transgression. Uh, you know, by his stripes. We are healed. Uh, healed from what? From error. From from death. You understand? Uh, so I, all all those words, if you just study it more and not take it for what it is, if you actually get in depth with it, you'll see that Isaiah is talking about uh, redemption from sin. Amen? So you want to add anything to Amen. that? Uh, so just, yeah, it's very important to read things properly in its context to, uh, to not like verse snatch or we have to uh, study the, the Bible properly. We can't just read just verse five and then apply it to a physical healing. It's we have to read the context. It has to be like a who, what, when, where, why, um, because we can't just, you understand, like that's called, uh, exegeting scripture it's called i don't say big divanaria it's called hermeneutics and it's just interpreting the bible uh interpretation of the bible scripture interprets scripture who what when where why it's like having a conversation with somebody right like me and you well divano we're having a conversation and i said hold on hold on you guys are frozen can you guys hear me You, hold on, guys. Something happened. Okay, I'm going to end it and save this live, and then we're going to come back. Everybody make sure to rejoin. All right, we're live. Okay. Sorry about earlier to bless you guys. Um, Hold on, everybody. So again, there's like questions on the board, and uh, we're going to be more than happy to answer that. If there's any, um, if you guys are not sure, a little bit stuck on something, what we've been talking about, um, we're going to get into now. So at the, like I said, at the, the questions and answers, we'll do that at the end uh, when we cover the other two topics, and uh, and then we'll take it from there.
Okay, uh, now we're going to get into the speak it into existence now, and again, this ties into sowing the seeds, the speak into existence, faith, prosperity. It all ties into the same uh, deception. All right, um, and uh, an example for that is Genesis three. I want you guys to go there, and we know the story. Well, uh, Dujmano. He was giving Eve like a, a desire to be like God. So let's read that. And he says, he said to the woman, Genesis 3, did, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither shall you touch it lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to the eyes, and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Um, now after the fall, girls... It's in our sin nature to rebel against God uh, and yet want to be God ourselves. Mm. Uh, we want to be our own gods now. Okay? We want to be the ones that's in control in a sense like God. Uh, now, see, this is speak it into existence. This is that doctrine. You could be like God. And you could speak things into existence over your circumstances. Now, can we speak things into existence, uh, Erica? You want to touch up on that? Um, so where they get this uh, speaking things into existence is um, in Genesis 1, when uh, God speaks uh, the, the world into existence, he speaks light into existence. And uh, these word of faith teachers taught that because we, um, because now the Holy Spirit is in us, we're also little gods. This is where they got the little god theology. And we also have the power to speak things into existence. Um, that whole idea is faulty because um, in Scripture we see that God, const uh, he says, and you thought I was like you. God is not on our level where the, the creator and the creation are not the same. Um, does it? Make one for honorable use or dishonorable use. He is the authority. He's the final authority figure in our life. Uh, the Word of Faith movement puts us on the same level and gives us the same authority as God. They also claim that um, we're, we're, we share holiness. Uh, they preach perfectionism, that uh, when they got saved, they don't sin anymore. Uh, the Bible tells us that if anybody says he is without sin, he makes God out to be a liar. And that's very dangerous. Um, it, speaking things into existence is also something called the law of attraction, which you'll see in Buddhism, right. Hinduism, uh, paganism. Uh, Danani would speak. They think if you just um, if you just say enough good things, good things will happen. And the right. Bible doesn't support that. You can't find that anywhere in the Bible that if you say enough good things, good things will happen. And Jeremiah. Uh, the book of Jeremiah, when uh, God calls Jeremiah to give prophecy about the the things that are going to happen, you see the false teachers coming up and promising, oh, no, everything's going to be okay. Uh, God said he's changed his mind. He, we're going to live a peaceful and joyful life. Uh, nothing bad's going to happen. And constantly God calls Jeremiah up to tell them again, like, that's not what I'm saying. I didn't speak to these people. Amazing, amazing. So the root of it, though, guys, is it's a lie. That we, that we, you will be just like God. That was a lie. Uh, Matthew four, girls. If you're there, go to Matthew four. Another like speaking into existence. Uh, you could see that Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to, uh, to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry, and the tempter came to him and said to him, if, if you are the son of God, 
Command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Um, but as he wanted him to uh, speak, command to the stones to become bread. You understand? That's not good. This is what the enemy wants us to do, is the point that I'm trying to make here. Um, a lot of teachers will emphasize that you you can uh, test God, and and they mention it in Malachi three. I one more time, you can test him with tithes. You could you could do you can test him. Okay, so first off, girls, Malachi it was written to uh, the priest of the temple. The context of Malachi, and girls, we're not saying don't tithe. That's beautiful. That if you want to tithe, if you if you want the, your church to prosper, uh, to help your local church, absolutely yes. The Amen. point is, anybody that wants you to test God, okay, regardless, if God said test me on this, it, it should not be to get a blessing. So you see, uh, the devil wanted Jesus to test him uh, there with the scripture uh, of Psalm ninety one. He also said. Uh, where is it? Where is it where he said uh, where your where your foot? Uh, I'm paraphrasing it. It is. Uh, hold on. Then the devil took him to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, that "If you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone." So, uh, uh, he's taking something out of context, and that's Psalms uh, 91, the scripture of Psalm 91, and, and he, he took that out of context, and which was applied to us, okay? And, uh, and also, girls, he also said, he also said, and he took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and, and their glory. And he said to him, all these I will give to you if you fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said to him, be gone Satan for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Mm. Girls, what is uh, 1 John 5, uh, 15 says? Don't love the world or the things that's in the world. Uh, First John five fifteen. Is it first John five fifteen? Are you talking about the verse that says to be a friend of the world is to be an enemy of God? Yeah. Where is that at? Oh, yeah, no, it's not in uh but I'm sorry. It's, it's in uh, James 4. I think it's James 4 4. Uh, James, Did you guys find it? James 4 4. It's in James? Yeah, James yeah. 4 4. Uh, James 4 4. You adulterous people, do you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. And also it says, I can't find the scripture, God forgive me, but First John also says, do not love the world or the things that's in the world. For the love of the world is the, I'm paraphrasing it right now. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. For, the, for all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh and the desire of the eyes and the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world is passing away along with its, with its desires. But whoever does the will of God abides forever. So it's the same sin. Don't love the as Genesis 3 uh, and Matthew 4. Yes, the, the devil is tempting Jesus with worldly possessions and with kingdoms, with the earth. He's promising him the devil's mouth hall. Okay? So, Kakalaitem, Kai Duchon, faith, prosperity, speaking into existence, their main proof is that this is what they're saying is true. It's the prosperity. You understand? Anything you want to add more, Erica? Um, 
Um, just the emphasis on that we see God never promises these things, but the devil does. Uh, when the devil's uh, tempting Jesus, he promises him the, the riches and, right. and all the money and uh, all his the, the heart's desires. See, these uh, preachers will say, uh, the Lord, may he give you your heart's desires. I used to pray that all the time. I changed okay. the way I pray now. Because I know that the desires of our heart and our flesh is wicked. And anything I could want for myself, anything I want in my flesh, is not of God. I'll always want the wrong in my life. If I'm praying for my selfish prayers, and I'm not in my word, and I don't know, and I'm um, convinced by these preachers that God wants to give me my heart's desires. He wants to make sure I'm prosperous, and he wants to give me um, whatever it is I have my heart set on. My heart could be on evil things. I could pray to murder someone. I could pray to rob someone. I could, my heart could be set on uh, killing my brother, hating my brother, uh, wishing bad for people. It's um, it's, it's pretty uh, pretty scary when you really get into it. You could sit here for hours. It is, yeah. Oh, uh, the the prosperity, the problem, or right, prosperity, minyo be. This is the nebo chasel. Uh, this is the nebo kud, nebo mobili, baro kud sutu. That's not always a sign of blessings, girls. It, that's not always okay. See, be, 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 this is this works, but because you could see, Erica just said, because you could see the devil is tempting Jesus with the same things. That's a big thing there. He, he's tempting Jesus with the same things, these worldly things. So it can't be that prosperity is uh, always a sign of God's blessing. Uh, Girls, subjene, like for example, like Oprah Winfrey. I think that that guy, she's a billionaire. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, he's uh, he's an atheist, I think. Okay, uh, they're billionaires, Scarlett J. And many people in this world, even of different religions, are So being rich in this world and possessions is not not always a sign of God's approval, of God's blessings. So to make this clear, the devil used prosperity to get Jesus to sin, to speak things into existence. Right, girls? Yep. All right. Um, so, it's it's not, it's very uh, satanic, girls. It's it's not good. Um, okay, so, Amado Sastimos, Amado Mobilia, Amado Sunokai. It's not always the case here. And again, we're not saying, girls, that God doesn't want to bless you, that God won't bless you. Like we mentioned earlier, the gospel doesn't promise all of these things. It promises life abundantly. Amen. The afterlife in heaven. The scripture that's always, like I said earlier, that's taken out of context. Um, all right, so... Let's see here. Uh, anything else that you guys want to touch up on now? <clears throat> yeah, I want to just add added, uh, something that all of uh, all of these word of faith teachers will do something called verse snatching. Uh, they they totally excuse the context of the verse and use it to fit their theology. For instance, let me read Psalms eighty two six. This is God speaking. Okay. I I said this is God speaking. I said, you are gods. Indeed, all of you are sons of the Most High. Uh, I could use this verse to say, look, God says we are gods. Uh, we can call distance. We can aim it and claim it. Uh, we can uh, do all these things because God is calling us God, right? But if we look at the context, on the, on the context of what this is saying, if we read the whole chapter, We'll see that God is referring to judges who were in wow. command. Uh, wow. God had authority over the people who were judging with partiality. Let's read the verse. Let's go from verse 4. I read verse 6 and 7. Let's go from verse 4. This is Psalms uh, 82, verse 4 through okay. 8. Rescue the weak and meek, delivered out of the hand of the wicked. They do not know, nor do they understand that they walk about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said, you are gods. 
and all of you are the sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you will die like men and fall like any of the princes. And then that, that's the end of God speaking. And the person who wrote the psalm said, Arise, O God, uh, and judge all the nations. They'll use verses like this to fit their belief and completely plagiarize the context. Uh, but if you look up the verse, you'll see that he's talking about men who, had, uh, who he had appointed to be judges over the people. When he calls them gods, he's not saying that they are holy beings who have powers or are a spirit because he's the one true God. But he's using this word to show them, look, I am giving you authority over these people. Uh, like when Sarah called Abraham uh, her Lord, she didn't mean he was a holy Lord, a divine God. She meant he had authority over her. In the same way God was saying, uh, that these judges had authority over these people, but God has a final authority. He's the final judge, uh, and he is the one true God. Only God has the power to speak things into existence. Uh, it says that in Romans, I don't remember the verse, girls, where it says that um, he has the power to call things into existence that not that was not there before. So God has his power. There can be multiple gods, Shabbat. We're not Mormon. We're Christians. Amen? Mm -hmm. So we can't. I'm a, I'm a God, Tiffany's a God, Erica's a God, Ashley's a God, Candy's a God. No, there's there's God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. They are three in one. It's not all of us. There's no such thing. The Bible never talks about a little God doctrine. So when you see a verse where it sounds like it's saying something like that, if you look at the context, most assuredly, it's not talking like that. The, Bible's, the Bible does call us uh, heirs of royal priestlyhood. Uh, sons of, of God. Um, the Bible refers to us as things like that, servants of the Lord, bond servants, um, slaves to righteousness. The Bible refers to us as, as in those categories, but the Bible never calls us gods. Uh, and if you look right. at the con that there, he was talking about judges over people. He was giving them, and he uses a lowercase g, which means well, they're not God, you understand? Uh, so the, the Bible con continuously shows us over and over again that there is no such thing as a human being, a moral human being, to have power and authority and, uh, to have, power and have supernatural powers to call things into existence. Uh, that's Great. God. God is uh, a deity, amen? But he's spirit. Um, that we don't amen. have that. That's all, that all that power and authority belongs to God. And look how he said, uh, you will die. Amen. So God doesn't die. Amen. Like God doesn't die. So he tells them, you will die. So he's showing them, look, you're not God. I am the, the God. I am the true God. I am the, the divine spirit. Uh, so it's, it's, it's plain to see in the verses when you actually study the context of what they say. We don't have that ability to uh, name things and claim them. I watched a video earlier on a Gaji, and she's talking about the law of attraction. And it's so scary, girls, because these people who are not Christian use words that pastors on TV and use. Uh, name that and claim that. Speak that into existence. Put that out into the universe. Yes. Reap that harvest. They use words that you hear in church. Uh, and she's talking about the law of attraction and how Jim Carrey wrote a checkbook for $10 million. And uh, he wrote it on Thanksgiving. And then 10 years later, he got paid a check for $10 million. And that's what we should do. Uh, we should write a check, and she didn't say from God, we should write a check from the universe. So she put Chayapi on Modell. And yet she's using the same words and having the same mentality as our pastors, as some people we watch on TVN. So this is the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, very thoughtful. The Bible says not to be conformed into the world, but to be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Why is it that we resemble the world so much? Amen. So why does it look like why is it that we look like the world so much in our words, in our thoughts, in our acts, and what we desire? Erica said, "If, if um, how's it going? Delight yourself in the Lord, and He will give you the desires of your heart." But see, here's yeah. the thing: if you're delighting in the Lord, He's the desire of your heart, so He'll give you what Himself, eternal salvation. Amen. So yeah. that the, the, the calling things into existence and naming and claiming it is nowhere to be found in Scripture. Amen. And then, um, girls, like maybe some of you are thinking, all right, well, what's the big deal? 
right? Maybe there's, maybe you guys are thinking in your mind that people, uh, the churches, they're promising wealth and health and success and speak it and claim it. What's so serious about that? Do we have more scripture to provide that this is a false teaching? Yes. We want to even highlight it a little bit more that this is my word about. Um, girls, it's uh, 1 Timothy 6, 5 through 11. And constant friction among people who are depraved in mind and deprived of the truth, imagine, imagining that godliness is a means of gain. But godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world and we cannot take anything out of the world. But if we have food, but if we have food for clothing, with these we will be content. Amen. Amen. Um, okay, so basically what that means is like the contentment that you have is like you're happy in your circumstances regardless. Because you have the fullness of joy because you have God. Amen. Uh, the ones that are depraved in mind, like Erica said, the heart is deceitful above all else. Who could know it? Amen. And yeah. uh, these people that are depraved in mind, they're using godliness. Okay. They're using the pulpit. They're using, okay, a church. Uh, it's They're using that for gain, for selfish gain. Okay. Uh, to, you understand, use the little people like they victimize them. Okay, under compulsion. Um, we're going to get into the sowing the seeds part about that too in a couple minutes. You understand? So um, it's very scary. But the ones that have fullness of joy in God and they're content in God, their their desires, is to serve Him, to do what He wants, to do what God wants. Amen. It's always the believer's desire to do the Father's will and abide in Him, and not your own selfish uh, desires. So uh, a lot of people will say that money itself is evil. Uh, in First Timothy, I think in the same context, uh, for the love of money is the is a root of all kinds of evil. It is. Hold on. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It's through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves to many pangs. Um, so it's the love of money girls is the root of all evil. It's what we do with our money girls is the problem. If we're just paper chasing and we go to the extreme, they lost with Lala Bay and go against the God of Scripture when we lust over it and it gets too much to our head. Um, that's the problem, guys. And... When we're telling the, the gospel girls, right, whatever it is, after we do a live or we're on the prayer line, um, the message is never come to Jesus and Jesus will make you rich. Right, guys? Amen. Uh, come to Jesus and he will heal your sick child. Come to Jesus and he'll give you a new car. The only reason someone should come to Jesus is to be taking away to get away from the, because the devil has a grip on you. If you're not in Christ, um, and and you're coming to Jesus not to go to hell to receive eternal life, and to, that we have to musatiharasame that we're, we're sinners against the holy God, and that we want mangasamaro yetimos katrodel, and Christ is our only hope to be reconciled to the Father. Um, they have to come with those intentions. If you're coming to Jesus to receive money, uh, to receive health, prosperity, you're you're not coming to him with the right motives, guys. I would want my guess they're making themselves an imaginary Jesus, the type of Jesus that's always going to heal. I saw Bravanel, and it's it's just not the Jesus of the scriptures. Amen. Yeah. Uh, now, um, anything else that you want to add? You want to get into about now, like the sowing seeds, uh, Bonnie? If Erica wants to ask something, I'm, I'm, I can get into the next subject. It's up to Erica. Yeah. You want to say anything, uh, Erica? No, no, you guys can go right into it. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I said you guys can go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to answer. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Uh, so we're going to get into the sowing of the seed girls, and a lot of this, uh, it's happened to say, I've, I've witnessed it firsthand, 
and even uh, crept itself into the homeowner church. So what you're hearing basically all the time, uh, when we used to go to the church, we don't now because of the virus, but you're basically hearing it all the time. Uh, sow a seed, sow a seed, sow a seed. So the scary thing is that the Bible actually does talk about this. Uh, body is verse snatching. So this teaching um, in the church is so dangerous because it tends to play with people's emotions. Uh, the term sow a seed, uh, the terms, actually the term seed and sowing and reaping are biblical, but drastically taken out of context. These teachers will say to sow money seeds to reap a harvest of uh, either blessings or healings or more money. This doctrine is not biblical and in fact goes against scripture. They'll say that the money represents uh, the seed and when you offer it to the church or the pastor or whoever, the Lord will repay you with whatever you had on your mind when sowing it. Uh, this girl is called bribery, amen, uh, and good karma. Two of which yeah. God, uh, the Bible says God does not accept bribery of man and uh, of anyone. Another verse says that he reigns on the just and the unjust. So this is proof that he's not a God of good karma. So it doesn't matter if you do good or uh, if you're, and his mom says he signs his face on the righteous and the unrighteous. So God is not a God of karma. That's Buddha. That's not God. That's not the God uh, that's seated on his throne in heaven. Uh, that's that, that that's not our God. That's not the, the father of Jesus Christ. So he's not a God of karma. They'll use terms like manifest uh, or your season is coming uh, or um, or reap a harvest. These Very true. In, these these uh, teachers are using terms. These teachers are, are, are using terms that are not uh, in, in, in the way they're in the way they're giving it. It's not the right context. Uh, right. They're completely or snatching, amen. So, um, but again, all these terms are in the Bible, but not in the way they're teaching it. So, what is the seed referring to? Because the Bible does say to sow a seed, the Bible does say you'll reap a harvest, the Bible does talk about the sower and the seed. So, I want to go real fast to Luke 8, amen. And this amen. is over. just a moment, girls. So we're going Luke 8. I'm going to read the NIV version. Let's go from verse 4. While a large crowd was gathering and people were coming to Jesus from a town after town, he told this parable, verse 5. A farmer went out to sow his seeds, and he was scattering the seed, and he was scattering the seed. Some fell along the path. It was trampled on, and birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and it came up, and it, uh, and, I'm sorry, let me do that again. Some fell along the path, it trampled on, and the birds ate it up. Some fell on rocky ground, and when it came up, the plants withered because they had no moisture. Other seeds fell along thorns, and which grew up, which grew up, with it and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil and came up and yielded a crop, a hundred times more than what was sown. When he said this, he called out, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear. This is verse nine. His disciples asked him, what does this parable mean? I'm gonna to go to verse 11 when Jesus explains the parable. He says, this is the meaning of the parable. You ready? The seed is the word of God. Amen? Those Amen. along the path are the ones who hear, and then the devil comes and takes away the word and from their hearts, so that they may not believe and be saved. These on the rocky ground are the ones who receive the word with joy when they hear it, but, when they have, but have no root. They believe for a while, but in the meantime, when the testing comes, they fall away. The seed that fell among the thorns... Stands, stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, 
and by preserving produce a crop. So the Bible talks about a seed, a harvest, a crop, a season, all of these things. Uh, Paul says, I plant the seed, Apollos waters it, but it's God who allows it to grow. So the Bible is not shy about talking about a seed and a harvest and growth. But what the Bible is talking about is itself. The Bible is the seed to which uh, it's talking about. Uh, the seed to which the word of God is referring is itself. Us Christians. Uh, so so uh, us Christians, the seed we're supposed to plant is the gospel. And the harvest we are to reap is more believers, not money or more blessings or anything worldly. But we are to plant seeds of the gospel into people's hearts. That's, that's what the word's talking about. The, the Bible actually is against trying to buy God's free gift. Amen? So watch Amen. this. This is Acts 8, verse 20. Verse 20. But Peter said to him, May your money be destroyed along with you, because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. Amen? Let me get into the wow. context. Wow. Against that context just for a second so you can see what's actually going on. Uh, the reason why Peter even said that. So they, they were he, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I believe his name was Simon. Uh, I think, yeah, give me this power also that I may heal people. Uh, so Peter tells him straight out. Uh, may your money be perished with you, for you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. Let me get that verse, girls, just so I read it out of the Bible. I think it's in Acts 8. Acts 8? Yeah. Got it. Yeah, Acts 8 20. And this is what it says. Amen. Bear with me. Take it you. Uh, Acts, I'm going to go to Acts 19. I just want to make sure I get it right. I'm sorry, girls. Pretty sure we're going to tell me whoever that was. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to. I can't believe that. All right. Acts 19. Okay. Give me also this ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hand may receive the Holy Spirit. But he wants to pay with it, other than So yeah. Peter asked, your money perish with you because you thought you could buy the free gift of God with money. So God is not selling his gift, amen? God doesn't sell uh, the Spirit. God doesn't sell salvation. God doesn't, uh, he's not looking for uh, us to sow a seed or whatever. If the Lord puts upon your heart to give somebody money, to give a love offering. That's that's yeah. the part a lot of us did away with. We we switched out love offering for sowing the seed. So if God puts it on your heart to give somebody a love offering, then that's a beautiful thing. That's the work of the Holy Spirit. But by sitting here and saying, I'm gonna take this seed and I'm gonna give it to the church, and then God's gonna give me this kind of blessing or this kind of healing. But God doesn't work like that. God can't be bribed, he can't be bought. And Amen. Um, but if, what Jesus said is, Jesus said this, when you pray, pray like this, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And then this, this sums all up. Thy kingdom come, thy will done on earth as it is in heaven. That's how we should pray. Lord, your will be done. Amen? Amen. Now, Barnett, and I'm off this spot though, with this being said, sowing seeds, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, a model... A model woman, but it's from Kako doctrine. If you sell, uh, for example, if you sell a thousand dollars to my ministry, you'll get what you need. This is very, very dangerous. Uh, again, this is also not a saving gospel. Like Bonnie said, this is not uh, this is not biblical. And uh, like when the Apostle Paul, uh, I think it's in Second Corinthians, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he also talked about sewing girls. But the thing is, he was mostly in need, and the man was always on the Rubiasas, and he would, there was times we mentioned earlier, he would go hungry, uh, he was always like left for dead, he was always mad he was always in jail. So when he would talk about sewing, um, 
It's because to chess, he needed it. It's not about, well, he said, well, do this so you could get uh, a brand new car, so you get yourself, you know, a Corvette. Uh, you understand? That's not what he meant. What, that's mm -hmm. my point is about the sewing. You understand? Um, you'll receive a healing. The woman is saying this. If you sell a thousand dollars to my ministry, you're going to receive a healing. Now, we, we, I guess we would all agree right now that it's a deed of darkness. Amen. Paul says, uh, girls, in the book of Ephesians in 5 11, uh, Ephesians 5 11, and I'm going to go there right now. Um, and it says here, take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Amen. Um, all right, so. You're coming against, you know, a church, certain, you know, people of God. You have no love because, you know, you guys are talking about this. A person who has no love, though, I want to make this clear, is not going to confront uh, this type of a teaching. Sowing seeds and, you understand, speak, naming it and claiming it and sowing your seeds. That's the person that has no love when they don't say nothing about it at all. And they don't come to you. Um, because this is very generally buki, ajapi, and this is something that is, like I said earlier, it's satanic. So, if we say, guys, well, you know what, just let the people live their lives, uh, let them believe what they want, okay? We would have no love, bro, yes. as believers. We, uh, according to scripture, amaro jabo, le jene kasa nudel, we gotta expose kakale brani. Um, to teach, to tell other people, you know what, Peyo, Kapo teaching Naiwota, Arakastut, Naikata Rodel, you know, watch yourself. That's a message of love. All right? people should be, um, after they hear us teaching, test the spirits, don't just uh, jump to the conclusion, oh, they're false, they're this and that. Actually, research this for yourself. Amen? Actually, yeah. look up look up the teachings, get in-depth into it. God is not surface. Get in-depth, search the scriptures. Uh, like like Betty used to say, be a Berean. Yeah. Don't stop, look for yourself, and always 10 out of 10, the Lord will show you his truth when you seek him. Amen. Don't just take our word for it. Even what we're saying right now, girls, to chess, be a Berean and search the scriptures to see. Test the spirits, as First John 4 says, if you're hearing these types of things in your church, if you're hearing this on an Insta uh, Instagram live stream, which I am seeing that constantly every day, I'm not going to mention people's names or whatever. That's, that's you know, but uh, if you're seeing this, okay, you got to test it according to the word of God, if what they're saying, if it lines up with scripture. And if it's not, all right, um, you got to pray to God for discernment. And the Holy Spirit will give you discernment and you have to respect that apostate. You gotta like keep away from people like that that are teaching something and then warn others so they don't get led astray. Amen. Um, and uh, Bhavani, it says in Second uh, Corinthians, I think, um, for God loves a cheerful giver, right? When you're sowing and you want to give like a love offering, right? Sow a seat to your little local church or something. If you're just in need and you want to see their little ministry grow, you want to be a part of that. God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Second Corinthians says not to do these things out of compulsion. But the late one, they're, they're telling you out of, uh, they're giving you like a guilt trip. They're putting you under compulsion. Yeah. Anything you guys want to add to that? Yeah, just that. Ernie, you want to go? Yeah, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, it's just, I agree 100% with everything you're saying. Uh, body, it's not to be, like, we give because out of gratitude, so for that, we go, no, 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 I'm ending. So we'll say, because we love him, they does. Jesus said, uh, we fed him, we clothed him, we've been in jail. And the disciples said, when did we do any of these things? When you do for one another, you're doing for me. So this is why we give and we help the church and we do. But we shouldn't say, okay, God, I'm going to give this and then I'm expecting you better give me something back. Because if now, what we're doing is we're subjecting God to us, where he has on our demands. Uh, it's how he blesses us and how much he blesses us. And then on top of all that, what that's doing is that's contradicting God's sovereignty. To say, mm -hmm. well, I'm 
God, and then God will give to me. But the Bible clearly states that God is sovereign. He controls um, what you get, when you get it, on the terms to which you get it on. Amen? Oh, very, very, very big point. Very, very big point. So the G people that are sowing seeds in order to get something back, uh, a bigger blessing, hundredfold blessing, whatever. In your life, you're tr you're turning the hand of God. Amen. And God is all knowing. God is omnipresent. God is omniscient. God is sovereign. Amen. Uh, the only reason, like we said, we you sow a seed is to 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 advance the gospel. That is what it's for. Amen. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I wanted to add something real quick. So, uh, the Muslim was Catholic before Islam went to Christianity. They weren't really Catholic. They were just superstitional, but all Catholic. And, uh, my Dumur, when somebody was to die, Shadana Zaytona's was in a casket. So that, and I, I never understood why. It was like a year ago or two when I found out, I asked my father, well, they remember when we were seen, we went to that funeral and they put money in the Rome's casket. Why did they do that? Well, so that was their superstition to buy their way into heaven. And thinking that scary bribe God into getting their salvation. Um, now, we know that a, a, you guys probably all heard of a Romano cop or a, a crooked cop where um, you could pay them off and they'll let you go or uh, you could pay off a, a crooked judge or a detective or even a bondsman that'll make sure you get your bond that night. Uh, kind of Romanes, and you'll give them money and they'll do what they have to do for you. Now, what they're saying with the sow a seed is pretty much the same thing. It's a bribe to God. If if we were to bribe God, who's a righteous judge, that would make him unjust. It would make him an unjust God. So it's totally taking the attributes of God and throwing them in the garbage like we don't need them. Um, Isaiah 61, 8 says, For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and the burnt offering. And I will faithfully give them their recompense and will make an everlasting covenant with them. Uh, Job 34, 12 says, Surely will, God will not act wickedly and the Almighty will not pervert justice. Uh, Deuteronomy 32, 4, The rock, his work is perfect, for all his ways are just. A uh, God of faithfulness and without injustice, righteousness and upright he is. So, now they'll crooked I, he'll accept a bribe on the side or he shows favoritism or right. uh, it'll just come in, all right, you gave me so much, you gave me more money than the last guy, so I'll give you the blessing. I'll give you the healing. God don't work that way. And who are we to question God whether he should give us things or not? For it is written, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Amen. Who are we to question God and, and what he's doing? Amen. Wow. It's amazing. Just to, to sow a seed I guess, in order to get more money, in order to get uh, blessed, that it's putting the Lord to the test, right? Yeah. Um, uh, actually, when uh, Jesus' ministry, when when he was his uh, earthly ministry, girls, if you notice, like he, uh, his ministry was like on people who did not sling a You know, people who was uh, poor. You know what I mean? They the show up. And if he's so much of uh, the, the prostitutes, you understand? He focused his ministry like on people like that, that, that where they had nothing to offer, right? And the sowing of the seed, it's like, again, it builds up a lot of a false hope, too. It builds up a lot of a false hope because if they sow that $1,000 seed or whatever, right? And if that Bali, if that blessing doesn't come to pass, if this doesn't pan out, who is it? Who do they blame? They blame and they question God. They go to the pastor. They'll say, "What happened? Um, did I have? Did I not have enough faith?" I even heard. I witnessed one time. People said, "You don't have enough faith." One said, "Well, the reason why your prayer didn't get answered, and you know what you did, it's because well, maybe you're just not saved." You see the trouble must that this could turn into when it's not according to the scriptures? It's crazy, guys. And um, they also, like, to make it seem like you're doing something wrong. And then when people get told 
Uh, it's God's will for you to prosper. It's God's will for you to have all these things. It's God's will for you to always be healed. It's God's will for all of these fabulous things to happen to you, which I've heard firsthand. Uh, I've heard somebody say this to a congregation that it's God's will that we'll always have and never lack. Um, my question to them would be this. What do you tell somebody that's on their deathbed? How do you explain this to them? You just got to have a little more faith. I can guarantee you that person that's about to die is praying to God that they don't. You understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Tell somebody that's hungry on the street. Oh, you just got, you got to sow seeds. I don't have no money to sow seeds. You understand? But see, here's the thing. In times like this, in times of maybe someone's dying or someone's on the street, it's usually that it's God's glory being shown through these people. Amen? So maybe it's yeah. time, it, maybe it's God wants to bring somebody home with him. You understand? This is why they're passing away. Uh, God wants to show his glory through that poor person. Amen? So when you when you're putting uh you're putting this seed you're planting this seed into their head that it's God's will it's God's will it's God's will and then they don't get it they blame God they don't blame you amen because what you're doing is you're verse snatching you understand what I'm saying and when you're verse yeah. snatching they think this is what God's word says and a lot of us because I was in this position too don't go to the word we need trust what everybody else says you understand mm -hmm. don't go straight yeah. to the word so. When we're trying to put somebody else says because we think they're educated, they're smart, and they're anointed, and they this and that, so they must know what the word is talking about, and I don't. And then they don't get what you promised them. Healings, blessings, money, all of that. They turn and they resent God, and, they, and they're mad at him, and they don't want to be involved. And this is ultimately what leads to people going in and out of the church. You ever hear how the pastor complained? There's always backsliders, there's always people are leaving the church and coming back, and there's always people who are uh, drinking one day after all day the next day, because the foundation to which their faith was built, built upon is not sturdy, amen? So when you're constantly promising them health, wealth, prosperity, uh, speaking to existence, uh, live positively, don't think of the bad, yes. that's bad, don't confess sickness, don't confess, even down to, um, I was talking to a family member, and I told him that I had a scary dream, don't confess that it's going to happen. Yeah. Even yeah. down that, um, when we put ourselves in that box, it's no longer uh, Christianity. It's, it falls under superstition. It falls under all these other things that we were set free from. Amen? So what someone's foundation is built upon is God's will for me to have everything I've ever wanted. Like the Amer like American gospel says, the American dream. And then you don't get that. In return, you get suffering uh, for privilege, for Christ's sake, they fall away fast. As the Bible says, there are some who the seed fell upon them, and then when trials and tribulations came, they booked, they were out, they were done. They don't want God no more. They don't want to worship Him no more. Uh, so ultimately, it's the foundation. You have to give them the gospel. The gospel is the firm foundation, the truth, the truth of the word. Amen. Beautifully said. Amen. It's like uh, the average gaji, right? The average veggie, and they want to live that American dream, right? And that American dream is Jean and Bishala, Len Piska uh, scholarship, okay, Tina Piska Cud. She gets herself a, a watch, a nice, uh, a nice car. And then if somebody is coming to her now and giving her this gospel to come to che come to Jesus to get health and wealth and prosperity and you can name it and claim it. Now, you understand, they're not coming to Jesus with the right motives, guys. That's that's very scary. It's like, was a, Jesus is now like an add-on uh, to their, ex it's just an extra accessor uh, accessory now is yeah. Jesus in her Lucky. life. Lucky charm. Right. It's was a, was, I want all of those things too. The, the natural man in 2 Corinthians tells us, Paul says, the natural man cannot understand the things of the spirit, for they are folly to him. Uh, the natural man is depraved in mind. Why? Because of the separation of him and God because of the zilf, because of sin. He doesn't understand the things of the spirit, the spiritual things, the word of God. 
none seek for God, as Romans 3.10 tells us. So if you're presenting this like false gospel to a person like that, they're going to say, you know what? Yeah, I want all of those benefits. That's going to be awesome. You understand? It produces false converts. That is the problem. Uh, and you know something, guys? Second Corinthians uh, 5.17. I'm just going to go there. Uh, Eric, just do you want to add anything to that? Just to let you girls know, we got 10 minutes. Um, I wanted to read uh, Romans, yeah, go ahead. You go. Uh, Romans 16, verses 17 through 18 says, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. By smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. And that goes back to, to just what you were saying, Tiffany, where um, these people could become false converts. Um, they're promised all these things, and then they don't come to pass, and then they walk away from the faith. And um, that also shows us that their faith was never there to begin with. If they went out from among right. us, they were never of us. Right, as First John tells us, right, right. And um, um, just one more thing before you go on, I just wanted to make this clear. Just yes, so everybody right. knows, this is not an Arminian versus Calvinist topic, okay? Arminians and Calvinists should both agree together that the word of fatal movement, uh, movement is heresy. It should be connect completely. Uh, we should, if we both agree on the attributes of God, who God is, and who Christ is, and what he's done for us, then we should both be able to deny this uh, false gospel. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Anything you want to add, uh, Bonnie? Uh, I don't want to add anything. I want to let you get your verse in, and then we'll give them a couple of verses on the gospel before we close. Amen. Um, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. I'm just going to say that. I feel like I'm talking too much, girls. I'm sorry. No. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay. 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All of this is from God. The mm -hmm. new Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Glory goes to God. Um, if you still like have desires to gratify the your flesh, um, like for example, like if you're infatuated, like with these worldly things, girls, that not ought to be. And I know that that's a very big struggle because we're still in the flesh, we're in a fallen world, and we're surrounded by that all the time. Mm -hmm. But you know something, um, me and my husband would have like conversations. Uh, I'm sure everybody has like where you could talk about your husband, like what your goals are, right? And what you want in life. Like at first, like I wanted like a real beautiful place and a ground floor a little place for myself but in Manhattan I wanted uh, a lot of money or just the typical things like that you understand but when God saved me I don't it's like I don't care I don't want any of that anymore glory goes to God I, I want I just want to do what God wants me to do amen it's like like the scripture says the old has passed and behold the new is here amen you just want to live a life now that's pleasing unto God that becomes your desire. Uh, I think, like Erica said, uh, the Lord will grant you the desires of your heart. It's not about your own personal desires anymore. That fades and that goes away. But the new desire, when you're born again, is to do your Father's will. You, you, I just want, you understand? Like, I think we all want like just a humble, normal little life that only gives God the glory. Amen. Amen. That's all that I wanted to say. Amen. Amen. Uh, Ashley, how much more time do we have? Um, can you guys hear me? Yeah. We yeah. have, we're at 54 right now. So we have about five minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go through Ephesians 2. Ephesians 2, this is why the only, the only verse I'm giving is Ephesians 2 because it basically gives the good news and the bad news in one scripture that we can close. Uh, and girls, it's up to you as well. I'm doing this to decide whether or not you want to make a follow-up live stream to go over questions and 
and everything like that, questions and answers. So, yeah, it reads like this. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you once walked, following the course of this world, the prince of power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the disobedience. Verse 3. Among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature, by nature, you know, something by nature means uh, naturally born with, like I was naturally born with uh, brown hair. So if I try to dye it blonde, I give it a month, and my roots will come out, and I'm, it's finished. And I'll yeah. show. Them. So, so we were by nature uh, children of wrath, amen? Uh, like the rest of mankind, verse 4. And verse 4 changes the narrative of the conversation, so the tables turn. So Paul just gave us the bad news that it says in Romans 3 that none seek after God, none understand the things of God. All have fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, none are righteous, none are good, no, not one. Amen? So this is all bad news. This is not good. This is terrible, terrible news. But Ephesians 4 changes the whole narrative around this. But God, being rich in mercy, amen, he was, he was, it was an abundance of mercy he had for us. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love which he loved us. So what it says in verse 5 is that even amen. when that you know, trespasses and sins made us alive together with Christ. And then Paul goes on to say, by grace you have been saved, verse 6, and raised up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ, verse 7. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable, it's unmeasurable, the immeasurable riches of his grace in, and kindness in Christ towards us. Then verse 8 it repeats itself. Paul says it again, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And look, look what he says. He gives an em uh, emphasis. He says, by grace you have been saved through faith. Amen. Um, uh, this is not of your own doing. It is a gift of God, verse 9, not a result of works, so that no one may boast, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand. So this is telling us God is so gracious and so mercy and so kind, and he loves us so much that we don't have to work for our salvation, we don't need to earn it, because it would no longer be a gift, it would be a payment, amen? So there's no working for salvation, there's no earnings for salvation, there's nothing we could have done out of our own righteousness, because uh, Romans 3 the feats that that, that 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 we could earn um, salvation, amen, that we're righteous on our own. Uh, but God, because he loved us, that so when we were dead in our trespasses and sins, he saved us from the wrath of himself, amen, by sending Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us. Uh, for uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe it's 520, where it says, he made him who knew no sin to be sin, that we may become the righteousness of God. It's called the great exchange. We gave Christ our sin, he knelt him on the cross, and in return gave us his righteousness that now we stand before God justified, imputed with righteousness, now being sanctified, and in the future, Lord, come, we will be glorified because of the glory of God, because of what he did. Amen? Amen. Ashley, you wanted to uh, read something real quick? Uh, yeah, Candy wanted me to read this scripture. I'm going to read it real quick because we only got a minute left. Uh, so it's Proverbs 30, verse 7 through 9. And it says, Oh God, I beg two favors from you. Let me have them before I die. First, help me never to tell a lie. Second, give me neither poverty nor riches. Give me just enough to satisfy my needs. For, for if I grow rich, I may deny you and say, who is the Lord? And if I am too poor, I may steal and thus insult God's holy name. Amen. Thank so we got, uh, I guess, I don't know if you guys wanted to go uh, do a second live stream for questions and answers, but we're going to end this one and then we'll save it and maybe we'll come back for a question and answers. God bless yeah. everybody for coming on. Yeah,